Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 16 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. If you haven't watched the last episodes, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to cover is the user interface a little bit. So being able to add new uh, functionalities and buttons, because right now the only thing we can do is um, send our inputs. So if we move around and if we are shooting and we can also send chat but in a real game we want to do a lot more than that maybe we want to use a specific item maybe we want to open a certain interface maybe we want to change map i don't know so i'm gonna make a little system that will be expendable that will allow us to um send more queries to the server before getting started with user interface, I want to talk a little bit about the different ways you can implement a user interface system in HTML5. So there are three main ways. The first one is Canva based. So this is what we are using right now for um, the zero, for example, the score of the player. So when the score increase, we call um, something like CTX field text and it refreshes the, the score. Um, the other way is with JavaScript. So we create um, div elements, for example, containers, and then we can position containers with JavaScript, set its content. So that's the JavaScript based um, technique. And then finally, there is the HTML technique, um, which is kind of like what we are using over here. So we got, for example, a div, then we can position elements. So this is purely HTML stuff. So the system you will want to use for your game really depends on the type of game you want to build. So each of the, the three methods have advantages, but also disadvantages. So the canvas is probably the easiest one to use. And that's why I showed it first. Um, but one of the biggest issue with it is that um, there's really no interaction. So it's purely I draw something on the screen and that's it. So if you want to be able to select text or input text or I don't know, just have a button that when you click a function is called, you will not be able to do that with Canvas. But for displaying, for example, the score, it's the score is just being displayed. So um, Canva base is OK. Uh, one of the biggest issue with Canva, too, is that it's really not performant. Um, so anything you do with the canvas other than drawing images, so drawing images is fast, but drawing text is really slow. And if you want something with multi-line, there's just no support for it. So you cannot display a large amount of text. It's, it won't look good. Now, another way to create interface is with JavaScript purely. So everything you see um, here, so all this um, HTML could be done with um, JavaScript alone. So we could create um, div element, specify the different properties, the inner HTML and etc. So for example, this block over here would translate roughly to create a div, set the ID to the right ID, set the display to none, then creating a canvas element, setting the ID to this, then the width then the height then the style to position absolute, and then appending the canvas to the game div. So it's like this block is inside that block. Um, but as you can see, it's it can get really messy and it's very hard to visually know what's going on. So when you see this over here, it's really clear that this is the child of this one. But trust me, when your application will get um, bigger, it's going to be very, very hard to maintain code written like this. So normally, I don't recommend doing this. Uh, but like I said, there are some cases where you will want to do that. And for updating the HTML, you will need to use JavaScript. But um, normally, you want to avoid um, using this. And finally, there's the purely HTML method. So kind of like this. So like I said, the biggest advantage is that it's easy to have a, an overview of how thing goes. So I know that this is an element that contains other elements. And yeah, the biggest problem with the HTML uh, method is that it's very hard to make reusable components. Um, so if, for example, I wanted to duplicate this 10 times. So I don't know, I want to have 10 chat and all the chat needs to be the same. You cannot do that. You will need to copy paste the code multiple times. And there can be a lot of issue. Uh, with JavaScript, it's pretty straightforward. You just create a function 
and you loop and you call it 10 times and it's all gonna work. But um, for HTML, um, like reusing component, you can do that with certain libraries. There's also HTML templates. There are many ways um, to do that, but it's uh, a lot more complex than with JavaScript, for example, or with the canvas method. But um, for big interface, um, I would personally recommend HTML. And that's what I'm using with um, Rain Engine. So everything you see, so all the menus, all the stuff, for example, having a drag and drop would be um, unthinkable with the canvas method, for example. And the world map, all of that is purely, even the world map over here, this is purely in um, HTML. So yeah. So anyway, with that being said, um, let's work on the interface. So what I'm planning to do with the game is to add a new functionality. At the bottom left of the screen, we're going to add a button called change map. And when the player will click on it, it will change the map of the player. So that's the goal. So we could do it um, with JavaScript. So we create a button and then we position it at the bottom left corner. Um, but I'm going to stick with HTML, um, even though it's probably a little bit more complex. Um, but in the long run, it's going to be a lot more useful to have a, a real JavaScript system. So I'm going to modify a little bit how we structured this. Um, and I, for this video, I assume that you have watched my HTML interface video series. Um, I will put the link in the description. Um, but roughly what you need to understand about HTML is um, how to create divs and stuff like that, how to position them. So the, the first episode of the series is about positioning. So position absolute, the left, top, and the margin. That's pretty much all you need to do. So I'm not gonna cover like how to make it look nice. It's purely uh, positioning that's important, at least for now, in our case. So what I'm going to do is to split the game, the, the interface into two entirely separated parts. So there will be the HTML, the interface that will be over the game. So over this box, and then there will be the game interface that will be outside. So for example, the chat will be entirely outside of the game. So it's gonna look something like this. So we will have a div called game, and game will contain all the things that appear on top of the game. So it's gonna have a width of 500 and 500. Um, this over here is no longer useful. Top position absolute. And finally, there will be the stuff that will appear below the game. So with a margin top of 520 to appear below, below this one. So there we go. Uh, margin, we no longer need margin over here. I guess that's pretty much it. So in theory, nothing should have changed with this. So yeah, nothing changed except 20 px over here, 20 pixel. Um, yeah. So the next step would be to add a HTML element that will contain all the game UI um, that will appear over the game. Because right now we got two canvases that are um, 500 each. And now what I'm, what I'm going to do is to add another div that will appear above of all the other stuff with also a 500, 500. And over here, this, this block over here, this div will contain all the user interface of our game. So if we want to add buttons, if we want to add the score, if we want to add yeah, an interface, uh, not an interface, an inventory, a bank, a dialogue between NPCs, all of this will go in that div over here. So yeah, let's just check how this looks right now. So it should look exactly the same, but I uh, just want to show you. So um, as usual, you want to open the dev tools by pressing F12, and then you want to go to elements, and then you can analyze a little bit what we have done with the game so far. So we got this sign div with the username password, so it's no longer being displayed, so display none. And then we got the game div, so the game div is everything we see, including the chat over there. So inside this, there is two blocks. There is the game, so this block over here, and then there is the below game with a huge uh, margin top to appear below. 
and everything not related with the game would appear here. Now over there, there's the two canvas on top of each other and then there's the UI canvas. It will appear above, above all of that. So for example, the score would be in that div over here. Okay, so like I said earlier, what I want to add is a button that when you click on it, it's gonna change the map of the plier. So it would look something like this. So we add a button. When you click on it, it's gonna call the change map function. The position of the button will be um, position absolute. Everything inside that box needs to be position absolute, by the way. Um, so position absolute, bottom zero, left zero. So it's gonna appear at the bottom left corner of the screen and it's content gonna be change map. Now change map is not implemented. We need to implement it. So over here, we're gonna create a UI section that will contain all the functionalities used by the user interface. So change map, what it's gonna do is, um, for now it's just gonna print something. So we will need to modify the server, obviously for, for this to work, but for now it's just gonna display a message. So let's check how it looks. There we go, we got a change map that appears above the game. And if I click on it, it's gonna display change map. There we go. So if you remember correctly, um, every time we want to send a package to the server, we need to use the socket emit function. So if we want to add new functionalities that the player can do, we can, we, we'll need to create a new type of package. In our case, um, the new type of package will be called change map. And um, basically by clicking the button, we are going to send a package called change map to the server with no um, content because there is no parameter to it. Eventually we could specify the name of the map we want or the player we want to join, stuff like that. But let's keep it simple. Now we send a package to the server with the ID change map. Now the server needs to do something with that package. So, um, okay, over here. So when the player connects, um, yeah, there's two places we can add it. I'll add it over here. So when the player connect, we add new fun new type of packages related with the player. So for example, we added the key presses. So when we receive a key press package, we do specific logic. And now the new type is change map. So let's type it so change map. So whenever we receive a package like this, what we are going to do is that if the player map was equal to the field, we're gonna change it for the forest, and otherwise, we're gonna change it for the field. So it's basically just swapping the, the map. And we have access to the player because we are inside the player connect, so we are modifying this player over here. So we are always modifying the, the right thing, the right player. Now, one of the thing with the current system is that even if we change the player map, it's not actually going to change anything to the client. Because yes, we change that on the server, but the client is not notified of that change. So what we will need to do is to um, tell the client that its map have changed. So in the player over here, we got something called the update package. So inside the update package, we are going to specify in what map the player is. So we were already uh, specifying the X, Y, and other stuff that can change. But now another thing that can change is the map. So we're gonna add it here. And on the client, when we receive a package, okay, when we receive a package, we look through every player update package. And for each of them, if the package map is not undefined, we're gonna set the player map to whatever the package is. So let's just reset the server over here. Reset the server, log into the game and change map. There we go, we can change map. Yes. So just a little recap of what's going on. So we added an HTML element here button, when we click on it with the on click um, function, so we click on it, change map, change map emits a package called change map. On the server, 
when we receive a package over here. So when we receive a package that it's called change map, we change the map of the player. So we swap it and every single frame in the set interval, we call the player update loop to gather all the updates about all the players. And inside the player update loop, we get the update pack and the update pack contains the map. And when we send it to the client, it's gonna go in here. It's gonna go in here, over there. The map will be changed. And when we will eventually draw the map over here, this will have been changed. So we're gonna draw the right thing. And I believe bullet wise, it's also gonna fix it. Because when we draw bullets, we check if the bullet being drawn is within the map of the player. So this will have changed. So we are no longer going to draw them. We are going to draw the right bullet at the end. Um, so yeah, it, it was a little change. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but the, the strategy for adding more user interface and more feature is relatively um, the same. So you add a new button or whatever over here. When you click on it, it's gonna call, it's gonna send a package, server gonna do something, it's gonna emit a package to the, the client with the, the response of what to do um, after pressing the button. And yeah, so I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next video. So see ya.